Good morning, everybody. Guys, gals, dudes, dogs, peeps, and peepets. Um, this is Action by Thought. I'm Chris. Let's go ahead and start with prayer. Lord, we just come to you now and just uh, we just praise your holy name, Lord. We praise your name for a beautiful day outside and just your creation in general. Uh, pray that you would be with the with this lesson, message, Bible study by whatever title. Uh, by whatever name, method there, with uh, just enlighten us, Lord. Just speak, speak through, well, me, I'm the one talking. Speak through me, but also open the hearts and ears of those listening to the enlightenment of, to your enlightenment, Lord. Give us all, bless us all with what you have for us in your word. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right. This was actually intent. My initial thing here was just a Facebook post, which I've already posted it. But uh, it after I got it all typed up, because it was just going to be a short little thing, and then, of course, you know me, it got longer. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have but one scripture on it. Cause like I said, I wasn't excuse me, I wasn't planning on this carrying this long. But anyway, title is broken. Society sees a broken man. God sees a vessel he can use with man's humbleness. Society sees a leech to the system. God sees a vessel to witness for him. Society sees well. Society tends to see those with, uh, t just to overlook, excuse me, so that's, I'll start that one over. Society sees, and well, honestly, society tends to just overlook those with disabilities to a large degree because there's nothing there so far as contributing. Uh, God sees a man who has more time than most to study God's word and pray in his war room. And with that prayer and listening to God and Bible study comes submission and closer walk with God, closer relationship with God. This is not a religion, it's a relationship. Society sees a weakling. God sees a mighty warrior because he has put on the full armor of God in that Bible study and prayer. Society only sees those who contribute in an earthly way. Did I read that sentence right? Society only sees those who can contribute in an earthly way. God sees those who he can use in a mighty way to God's glory and to man's benefit. Society only recognizes those who are fit and able to contribute to society in the typical manner and mentality and disposes of those who can't. This is not necessarily on purpose, but it is ingrained early on. And I'm sure you can hear the cat in the background. God sees man for what he created us for. God sees that potential. Potential because he gave us free will. Do we will to do the will of the Father? This is our potential. Just how determined are Christians to do the will of the Father in heaven? The truth is most Christians think they're living the Christian life by going to church and church functions and being nice people. This description is nothing but few sitters, few sitters, not evangelizing Christians. Much prayer needs to go into asking what his purpose for you is as a Christian. When you do this and then start seeking Christian counsel as well, which is also biblical, God will reveal to you in whatever way he sees fit what his purpose for you is. Most likely, and I would say definitely, but that's that part of it is just me talking. Most likely his plan for you is going to challenge you in a way or in ways to take you out of your comfort zone. God's looking for your submission to him and obedience. James 4, 7 points to that, submission. He's not concerned, God is not concerned with your comfort level. There's no growth in Christ or any other growth within your comfort level. You've got to get out and, and 
to use the phrase, push the limits. But I'm not sure I'm happy with that phrase being, we need to get out and pray, let go and let God, and let God lead. Whatever limits are pushed, He will push them as long as we're obedient to Him and His call. Do you want to feel free with an amount of unexplainable peace? It's very simple. It really is. Ask Christ in your heart if you haven't already. Pray for God's will and pray for the wisdom to hear His answer and the strength to live it out. Be in fellowship with other believers for encouragement in your Christian walk and just as important, encourage others in their Christian walk. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the body of Christ. Now, by the time you're talking about your will and are you, is your is your desire, is your will to do the will of the Father? Yes, that is about you and your relationship with God. It's got to start here. I know I said it's not about you, but kind of got to categorize that. The first thing we have to do is ask Christ in the heart and then be submitted to God ourselves. Starts here, starts personal, starts in your heart. Then the church body, the Christian body in a local church, uh, small group Bible studies. So personally, then get involved in the Christian community, body of Christ, church body, and Y'all need to get together and, and figure out ways to get the church body corporately outside the church and into the community. And also, just when you go to town buy groceries or whatever, pray for and be watching for, be anxiously looking for, happy anxious, not a nervous anxious, but be looking for those opportunities to, it could be in a word, or a word, God bless you. The, let God lead that through the Holy Spirit. It works. Uh, like I said, get outside the church building as the church, body of believers, and be bold when you're out and about to share when you get an opportunity, when God puts that opportunity in front of you to witness to people, share what God's done in your life. Ask them if they know Jesus personally. Christians, you have a story to tell that will resonate with people. I'm world or I was. You know, we listen to these people, and it's great. That, I mean, they went really what deep down in the well. Well, drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever it was. And then this, I mean, even go to jail and then find the Gideon Bible on the the bench press bench for the bench press. Uh, and those are those stories are absolutely there. And they're amazing. But your story is just amazing. And in one sense of things, I mean God has people put in places because that's where he wants them. That's where, he, that's where the need is. Uh, I can even see, this is just me talking now, uh, but I've heard parents say this before, and me as a parent, sometimes those type testimonies uh, are human side. When we hear those testimonies, we... Some, well, I wish I had that dynamic of testimony. There's a problem with that. You've got to go deep down in that well. You've got to have the whatever problem it is, alcohol, drugs, or, or whatever, in order to have that testimony. Well, it's not required. It's not necessary. God is what's necessary. And you're what you think is a humdrum life and not a very big testimony is a dynamic testimony when you let God lead it and let God tell you where to share it and talking to somebody that's had about the same style, that lifestyle. 
you have a dynamic testimony when you allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you in the proper place to the proper to the person that they, that God's put in front of you. There's no such thing as somebody with a there's no such thing as a humdrum testimony. Because somebody there, it will resonate with somebody. Pray for God to bless you with opportunities to tell people what He's done in your life. Your boldness will grow as you get more practice with your obedience to God. And honestly, in a comparable thought, think of anything else under the sun. The more you pr do it, practice. The more you practice at it and practice, the word's a little loosely, kind of like the, you know, a doctor's practice. It better not be a practice. He better be a professional and know what he's doing. <laughs> but the more we do it, the more comfortable we get with it. The only issue with that is it goes on both sides of the little fence. Uh, the more you do anything, Sin, not sin, good, bad, the more good we're going to be at it. So be sure where your priorities are. And God is priority one. And then God will, you know, those, what about your family? Well, you put God priority one, family priority two, family's going to be taken care of because you got God priority one. The biggest legacy we can give to our family is to be, is God, a godly heritage. You were chosen by God. So was I, so was every human on the planet. We were chosen by God to work for His purpose. We do have to surrender our life to Christ first before God can use us. You were chosen by God. Have you chosen God? If you have it and you want to, stick around. There's uh, coming in just a blink of an eye for the video a uh, video invitation and I'll walk you through the the prayer for salvation this is the part where with the message that you just heard the Bible study that you just heard uh, I want to compel you I want to urge you not to wait any longer. Don't hold off. Accept Jesus Christ in your heart right now. Accept Him as personal Lord and Savior. And here, follow me in this prayer sincerely. Pray sincere. Uh, but follow me in this prayer. As this is all it takes as far as the salvation experience. And then you have to grow. But salvation itself, accepting Christ. Follow me in this prayer. Lord, I know I'm a lost sinner. I believe you died on the cross and was raised again the third day for the remission of my sins and all the sins of all humanity. Forgive me of my sins, Lord, I repent. Come live in my heart, dear Lord. I want to live my life for you. Thank you, Lord, for loving me so I can know love and so I can love you. In Christ's holy name I pray. Amen and amen. Now, if you just sincerely prayed that prayer, sincerely is the key of the uh, but you had to pray it. You can't just listen to me. You have to pray the prayer. Congratulations. You are a child of God. You are a Christian. You are a saint of God. All that means the same thing. You're saved. Now you need to, I'm proud of you and I'm proud for you for taking this step. And I do know that in some circumstances it might be a little nerve-wracking, a little scary even, because of what you're living in the middle of. But God, if it was sincere, God, had you've already received a peace in your heart. You know you did the right thing. And now, if you are in a bad situation, need to pray about that bad situation. If you don't understand how all that works, you understood enough to know that you need Christ. Now, trust in that and pray about it. Find some Christian people that you can trust or anybody that you have, if you've had anybody to trust through time in this situation. 
pray with them about your situation. And if you're not in one of those, just get in your prayers and your Bible study. Pray for the Holy Spirit in Latin. Uh, but find you a God-fearing, holy Bible preaching church if you're not already in one. And talk to the preacher and pastor. He will be glad to assist you. Point you in the right direction for your Christian growth. If you know that you know that you know that you are already a Christian, but you've been wayward and you've not been living the Christian life, doesn't matter how deep you've gotten into anything, doesn't, doesn't matter. God can pull you out of it, and he will honor the sincere prayer of forgiveness and repentance, and you turn away from your sins and to God. And if you've gotten into anything thick and deep, whatever, I don't know what that definition is because I don't know your situation. God does know your situation, and none can take you away from God, not even yourself. He is still there. Now, tap into that resource that he gave you, prayer, holy Bible study. Let God empty yourself of you, empty yourself of that sin. Let God fill that hole and bring you back and then grow further. And I'm proud of you for starting your way back if you fit that bill. If anyone would like to communicate further, we'll let your fingers do the talking. Reply to the YouTube video. The YouTube video will be attached to a blog. Reply, comment, whatever, uh, whatever the terminology is. Re comment on either one or both. Uh, if you don't want to do that and you want it more private, my email address is in the description in the blog, in the video. My email address is in the lower part of the blog, as well as my phone number. Uh, leave a message, send a text, uh, well, voicemail message is what I meant, or send a text, whatever works. Uh, and, I, and now on the phone, if I don't get back with you relatively quick, get back on the blog or the YouTube, find one. I should be alerted to the fact that you sent me uh, a message and tell me that you tried to do X, Y, and Z, whatever it was, and that it didn't work. I will. I think I've got it figured out, but I'm not positive because I honestly hadn't had it that long, hadn't had any calls or text or voicemails. But I will get back with you. And again, if the phone doesn't work, email me or comment on the video or the blog. Any Christian that wants to grow, if you want to grow in your spiritual knowledge and your spiritual walk, with Christ, pray. Pray for the Holy Spirit, the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit as you study your Bible. Have that quiet time so God can speak to you. You got to get them things out of your ears if you're one to listen to music with earbuds or whatever they're called. Uh, but you've got to have that quiet, still time. Prayer is us talking to God, but we've got to be open and quiet and available for God to talk to us as well as praying for the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit and all your uh, your praise and your petitions to God, all of it. That will grow you in your spiritual maturity. It will mature, uh, you gain in your Christian walk. And that's all Christians and every Christian. doesn't matter how long we've been. There is no such thing as finish line this side of heaven. He will enlighten you to a to his word if you are struggling there I have I, I didn't read for years honestly uh, but that was a mistake on me don't be me I made the excuse of I don't understand what I'm reading and then I was finally convicted of it that if he can create the world and then created us do I not think he can enlighten me on what he said? Now, part of it was the fact I wasn't paying attention. The fact of me not picking things up in it was not on the Holy Spirit. It was not on God. That was on me. I wasn't paying the attention that I thought I was paying. Don't let not understanding quite yet drag you down. Keep going. Keep the faith. Keep it plugging. Keep reading. Keep praying. God will honor that with a sincere heart. Uh, I am not a counselor of any sort, people. I am a struggling Christian like every other 
that just do, I'm looking to do God's will, looking for what God's will for my life is. Actively seeking, that's the thing. You can be willing, but if you're not with, uh, if you don't have a active God, what do you want me to do? In trying to do things or starting to do things, you'll know if it. I mean, it's a good thing to do. Say it's a uh, involvement with church. It's a good thing to do, but you just don't fit. Something's wrong, and you feel it. Pray on it, and then talk to people. Talk to the, the biggest thing is prayer. And then Christian counsel, God will enlighten you. God will keep his promise. You do your part, not just willing, actively seeking. Uh, excuse me. Christianity is not passive. There's nothing passive about it. Now, within that active lifestyle, what is God's will for you? Where does he want you? Are you to clean up the church so everybody's comfortable there. And you don't feel like you're, that's just the first example that comes to mind. Uh, honorable job, period. The cleaning the church. Within that, somewhere, somehow, God is going to give you opportunities to witness to somebody if it's nothing else but the fact that you are doing that steadily and Hopefully, somebody is letting it be known and that you need to have that thanks. But it's not about having the thanks. It's about being, being obedient to God, and God will honor that. Whatever God's role for you is, that puts you at dynamic in God when you are obedient to God. The first, word of, the first words of the Great Commission are, Therefore, which biblically that generally means, hey, pay attention, I'm about to say something serious. And the word go. The Great Commission says for us to go out and make disciples of men. Notice it doesn't say Christians of men, and that men is mankind, men and women. It doesn't say Christians. Yes, for the first thing to do is they have to accept Christ in their heart. But from there... We're, we need to follow up with them. Christian community, we've got to nurture them, uh, point them in the right direction, put them in Scripture, and or not put them in Scripture, encourage them to be in Scripture. Well, small group study and Sunday school and all that, put them in Scripture. But we've got to, we've got to eliminate the, okay, you're saved, have a happy life, be blessed, and let them be. That's that's been happening in most cases, whether by def just accident, default, or whatever it is. And regardless, it doesn't matter. It's wrong. Christian community, stand up. When people join the church, when people get saved, nurture them, help them, or at least offer in whatever capacity God enlightens you to. Uh, guys, if you would, if you like what you've heard or read once I put this on the blog, I don't know which one applies to what. Click like. It does help the channel. Click and share it if you like what you hear. Subscribe. There's a whole lot more people watching than there is subscribing or clicking like even. Uh. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you do actually agree and like what you're hearing, the whole point of this is to spread the gospel. It's not about me and my channel. It's spreading the gospel. So pray on it if you're so inclined. Like, share, subscribe. Comment. Uh, uh, negative, uh, negative comments, positive comments. I want them all. Just be polite. In Christ, I love every single one of you. I want you in heaven when you die. I want, I want to be there in heaven when you, when you die. I will be there. I hope to see you there. The best part is, and the whole reason that I will be there and I hope you are there, is because God loves us. God loves you. And I concentrate on those. Generally, I concentrate on those in these little things that I say to those that are 
that don't like themselves very much, a little low on self-esteem, been there, done that, not much you can tell me that I haven't, my head anyway hasn't gone through. I had no reason for it. Some people do have avenues that explain why they're there. Not necessarily that they had to be there, but they are. And some people like me, it was in my head. I don't can't tell you why, but it was, and it was. Uh, it's serious for people that are there. Even though in my case, I had no. I had no cause for that effect. But God loves you. God will stay with you. And when you surrender your will to Him, my life is not mine. My life is God's. And I can't tell you how good a life that is. You'll have to experience it. I don't care how good you think your life is now. Life with God is better. I don't care how bad you think your life is right now. I do care. But my point is, life with God is a blessing in itself. And He will show you how to look at you. You look at yourself as God sees us through the blood of Christ. And you ask Christ in your heart and then you submit to God. If you would like to know a little bit more about that, uh, once again, let your fingers do the talking. Comment, email, phone call, leave a voicemail, text. I'll be glad to talk. God loves you, folks. Until the next one, until the next time. <laughs> Guys, gals, dudes, dogs. Amigos and amigas.